My name is Amy O'Shaughnessy and I'm the marketing manager at Revere Copper. Revere is a fascinating company. We date back to 1801. Um, Paul Revere was the original founder of Revere Copper, starting off with a copper rolling mill in Canton, Massachusetts. And the great story behind that is that that rolling mill was partly funded by our government to help um, produce sheets of copper to line our naval ships back in the early 1800s. But we are his only remaining legacy in the copper industry here in Rome, New York. We have roughly 325 people here and we produce a copper sheet strip, plate, and bar for several different unused applications. The copper industry has undergone a lot of changes over the years. Our customers um, have left America since, and that goes beyond 20 years, but they've left America and then we have um, a, a significant amount of imports coming in. And those two things have really impacted um, what we see at Revere and what we know our competitors, our domestic competitors see. As as the imports have, have come in, number one, we can't, we can't compete against it because the price they're coming in at is uh, significantly lower than us and there's no way that this can be attributed to just cheaper labor. There's way more at play here. There's other stuff working against us. The other thing that we notice is we have no opportunity, and I really mean no, to sell in their markets. They can come into our market and sell product day in and day out at prices lower than it costs us to make it. And we cannot sell into their markets. Anytime you try to put a quote out there to any European country, South America, it basically dies right there with your quote. And you can be as competitive as we can. It just goes nowhere because they, they always have an option that is just simply cheaper than what we can do. Um, you've got tariffs at play, you've got the uh, vet taxes and all those things, currency manipulation that hurt us, that hurt American manufacturers. I think manufacturing has got to be the heart and soul of any country. I think so much is lost when you don't have manufacturing. Just from the uh, very starting point of, it starts to build a community. Um, making something feels good. To have employees go to work and produce a product they know is being used elsewhere, or if you're a farmer that's being, um, you know, consumed, that feels good. There's intrinsic value in that, and I think that's important for a society to grow and to develop. You make something, you put it back out there, it gets used, you can keep making and growing, and, um, and, and it really plays into that true middle class. Those, those jobs in that community help support your local schools, um, your hospital, you've got, I mean, it just, it builds on everything. And um, I don't know, you, you just, you need that for your country to be great. Whether you're America, China, Germany, you, you need to have manufacturing, but we need to have it here. And we've just let it go. We think we're above that for some reason. I think CPA gives us a voice that was missing. Um, I've been at Revere 19 years and my understanding of trade and imports and and uh, you know policy in, in, in general has grown over the years you know so I, di I didn't understand as much when I was 21 when I started but now that I'm you know almost 41 um, I, I, I see so many things and, and one of the themes over those years is it wasn't being talked about at any real level and you didn't see real action taking place and so for the rest of us on the sideline, you just see the continued demise of manufacturing. So CPA comes along and you feel hope. CPA is made up of real people, real leaders from real manufacturing companies, from farmers and ranchers, people that are making America great. And I know that's a slogan that not everybody agrees with make America great and how you do that. but. CPA is, is helping truly make us great. So Revere really wants to align with them and Brian has too because there's action. We see opportunity for change.